Welcome again to our daily devotional series. As we're looking at the prophet Jeremiah and what he has to say to God's people Judah. We are calling this series a relevant prophet. As we look at what Jeremiah says to them and wonder and ask what it might mean for us. What can we learn as God's people today? He writes to God's people Judah. What does that mean for God's people, the church, Christians today? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8, and we're going to begin at verse 13. Jeremiah 8, verse 13, and we'll read through about verse 17. As we looked yesterday, the people still have no embarrassment, no shame over their sin. So God is still coming in punishment and judgment. I will surely gather them up, declares Yahweh. There will be no grapes on the vine and no figs on the tree, and the leaf will wither. And what I have given them will pass away. Why are we sitting still? Gather yourselves and let us go into the fortified cities and let us be silent there. Because Yahweh our God has silenced us and given us poisoned water to drink. For we have sinned against Yahweh. We waited for peace, but there was no good. For a time of healing, but behold, terror! From Dan is heard the snorting of his horses, and the sound of the neighing of his valiant steeds. The whole land quakes, and they come and devour the land as well as its fullness, the city and, it, and its inhabitants. For behold, I am sending serpents against you, vipers for which there is no charm, and they will bite you, declares Yahweh. God is expressing his, his anger, his wrath, his outrage against his people and their lack of shame and their believing in the lies. The lies that said, well, the temple of God's here. Why, why would God punish us? The lies that said, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And what we find here is God is saying, you are waiting in vain. For peace to come you're waiting in vain for healing to come it's not peace it's not healing it's terror something to be frightened of as we've been looking at jeremiah as we've been looking at this relevant prophecy it is to god's people judah and it is to God's people today for us to look at and say, where are we in this? And so look at your own life, not those around you, but look at your own life and ask yourself a simple question. If God were to write a specific letter for me, what would he really say? Am I believing lies? Am I expecting the eternity of peace when I'm not living for God now? Am I claiming God by name but yet living for the world? If that's the case, then it won't be peace that comes to us for the end, but it will be terror. We are waiting for a day of judgment from God. And my goal for me and my goal for you is that we are not waiting for peace in vain, but we are living for God so that when judgment does come, we are found faithful. And like the Apostle Paul will say in his letter to Timothy, I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith, I have finished the course. There is therefore laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. But not just to me only, but to all those who love his appearing. Are you living for him in a way that really makes you love the fact that he is coming back? 
that's the question that I think of when I read what's happening with Jeremiah and the people of Judah. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, again, we thank you for your love. Father, as we read prophets, prophets like Jeremiah and the message that they give to your people, Father, we are, we're concerned. We're concerned for ourselves and for those around us that that we are losing focus on you and focusing more on the world. Father, help us. Help us to come back. And Father, thank you for the time that we have to come back. And though we don't know how much time that is, Father, let us make the best use of the time that we have right now. Father, thank you for the grace and the forgiveness that is available through Jesus Christ. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to join you. I look forward to being with you, and I hope you're looking forward to these lessons, these challenging lessons as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.